Hello, I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. I'm going to say it once. I am not a Captain America fan. You, sir, are a Nazi! No, I am definitely not, and who the fuck are you? I am that one comic geek, and I am the voice of YouTube comic geeks everywhere. So how can you sit and say you are a superhero critic and not like Captain America? Hold your britches, Mr. Douchey Pants. Let me explain. The reason I am not a big fan of Captain America is because I think the character is boring. Other than having everybody he's ever loved be dead... In the comics I have personally read, he is not seen to have any weaknesses other than him being human in general. With that being said, the hero has had two shitty TV films, one meh 1990 film, and two successful Marvel Universe films. With that being said, the films are awesome. I liked both Captain America films. I guess, but he's still awesome as hell. To each their own. He's still awesome. Stop denying it or I will take this pencil and shove it up your asshole. Good God, you are violent as fuck. Anyway... So this guy will get off my back. Here is Captain America, first Avenger. Fucking Nazi. So our movie begins in the Arctic as men have discovered a frozen plane and go down to investigate it. Inside the plane, they make a discovery of the captain's shield frozen in ice before jumping to the pass of 1942 Norway, where we see German military with their leader looking for a specific artifact known as the Tesseract. Our villain, Johann Schmidt, or however his name is pronounced, played by Hugo Weaving. Of course he finds what he's looking for, and of course he shoots the man anyway. You cannot control the power you hold. You will burn! I already have. Well, that's one way to start the movie out with a bang. What? No sound effects? No joke? No interruption? Well, fine. Keep going. We jump to our hero Steve Rogers as he is enlisting into joining the military only to be turned down for his huge list of disabilities. At a movie, Steve gets ticked off at a very disrespectful asshole who won't stay quiet. In response, he gets his ass kicked in an alleyway. Hooray for future symbolism! And he is eventually saved by his friend Bucky who tells him he's been enlisted to get Steve's mind off of everything Bucky takes Steve to a museum where we see Howard Stark promoting futuristic vehicles. I did say a few years, didn't I? And we still yet to have flying cars. Where the 
fuck is my flying DeLorean? Steve and Bucky get into a friendly argument about Steve still wanting to serve America as a man listens to their conversation. While trying to enlist again, the same man comes into the room and announces that he is a doctor and that the army already has enough big men but approves Steve anyway. We then jump to our Nazis who are experimenting with the cube and we get a small taste of the cube's power. At the military site, we meet Agent Carter, who quickly puts a snooty man in his place before we meet the Colonel, played by Tommy Lee Jones. We go through a montage as the Colonel narrates about the war as more military scenes are shown. The Colonel wants to know why Rogers is so special and not somebody else, to which a grenade test is done. I do believe you fell for a dud. Good job nonetheless. But, yeah. The doctor visits Steve in his barracks and explains to him the backstory of our villains craving for power and the serum he has created. He explains that the more evil somebody is, the more evil the serum will make them. And he chose Steve because he is nothing but a good man. We then jump to Carter, taking Rogers to a secret military base where the experiment finally begins and Rogers gets the serum injections. At first, there is a small complication, but Steve demands them to finish the experiment anyway. Holy crap, he's no longer a CGI'd skinny man. The power of technology, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, there is a Nazi spy in the midst of the soldiers as the spy shoots and kills our doctor as Carter chases him out of the base into the streets. After saving Carter from being ran over, our hero chases the spy's taxi down as he shows great feats and abilities. After the taxi crashes, our spy kidnaps a kid only to dispose of him into the water. Since the kid can swim and he's okay, Rogers continues his pursuit as he takes down the spy only to get any information because of... One head. Two more shall take its place. Hail Hydra. And over at Hydra, the higher-ups want more from our villain, so he decides to show off the cube by, of course, killing them all. You will be brought before the Führer himself! Well, that escalated quickly. Back to America, the colonel announces that he wants to take the fight back to the Nazis, but ro tells Rogers that he will not be going. Star we then get a montage of our hero doing show after show, dressed like the original Captain America costume, and even reenacting the first issue's cover by ending each play with punching Hitler in the face. However, for some reason, the military men show no respect for him. Nice boots, Tinkerbell! Come on, guys. We're all on the same team here. Hey, Captain! Say next! While Carter and Rogers talk about what he was supposed to be, Rogers learns that Bucky may be dead, but the Colonel tells him that they are not going to make a rescue plan for the others not being saved. Our hero, of course, steps up and takes it upon himself to head into battle on his own. And the infiltration begins as Captain America heads into Nazi territory alone, taking down Nazi after Nazi until he frees all the captured men. As the Americans tear the Nazi base apart, Captain finds Bucky tied to a chair, but their reunion does not last long as they run into a self-destructing base. As they run into our main villain, who after a small tussle, the Red Skull finally shows his true face.
Man, you done fucked up in the woman department. The Red Skull gets away, of course, has our hero and sidekick try to make an escape and a daring leap to safety. The colonel automatically assumes that Rogers is dead until he shows up with all of the captured men, and the men give him a standing ovation. We get a few scenes of all of the military men having a few beers as Rogers and Barnes try to get reacquainted before jumping to Howard Stark, who is experimenting with the artifact with explosive results. Hard to see what all the fuss is about. Rogers goes to see Stark and is hit on by a blonde floozy, and after a forced kiss, Carter interrupts them and is clearly pissed off. Rogers talks to Stark and is shown different types of shields, and eventually picks up the one we all know and love. Carter shows him just how pissed off she really is. Oh dear God, please put the face back on. After a montage of the captain taking down Nazi camp after Nazi camp, we see Red Skull's anger with the doctor and his men before the captain and his men slip line onto a train and infiltrate it. Within the train, Bucky and Captain are separated as Bucky takes on normal guys and the captain takes on the big guy with the super gun. The train is broken and Bucky is sucked out to the side. The captain tries to save his friend, but luck is not with them in any way. Colonel goes to interrogate the doctor to learn that the Red Skull plans on taking over the entire planet and not just America. And we see how many men the Skull really has. We then go to a down in the dumps captain who tells Carter he'll stop at nothing to stop the Skull. After a mission briefing, the captain chooses to go straight through the front door, taking out Hydra Goon after Goon. Of course, he is eventually subdued and taken to the Skull face to face. Captain America keeps the Skull talking long enough for America's forces to spring their attack. It's now Americans versus Nazis as the final battle begins. The captain chases down the Red Skull as the Skull tries to evacuate in a plane. Spider Man, Spider Man. Whatever a spider can. The colonel shows up with Carter in a car to help the captain chase the skull down, getting a kiss before leaping off the runway. I don't actually have a joke here. Why is the camera pointed at me? While in the main plane, he is attacked by more hydragoons that most quickly die off before one attempts to get away in a smaller plane. Our captain, of course, stops the goon from going anywhere by hijacking his plane and flying it back to the main plane. Inside, once again, as the fight between Captain and Skull finally begins. During the fight, the autopilot is hit, causing the plane to try to crash once more. It is fixed, though, however, by the skull, and the skull starts our supervillain cliche number one, rambling about the hero ruining his plan. Yeah, 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 I was gonna be the master of the world, blah, 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 shut up and fight already! You could have the power of the gods! on your chest and think you fight a battle of nations. I have seen the future, Captain. There are no flags. Not my future. During the fight, the captain throws his shield and hits the Tesseract, releasing its power, and in the process, its power kills the Red Skull. Our hero, of course, being the only one on the plane, has to do what is necessary and has to make the ultimate sacrifice. So the plane does not crash into people as he drives the plane into the Arctic below. He promises Carter that he'll remember the dance date. Our movie ends with Stark in the military searching for our captain and the Tesseract before we jump to our sequel promoter of the captain waking up in our time or the present and as he tries to figure out where he is, 
He charges out of the building into Times Square, running into Nick Fury, learning the truth about his situation before the film ends. Look, I'm sorry about that little show back there, but we thought it best to break it to you slowly. Break what? You've been asleep, Cap, for almost 70 years. So there you go, Captain America, the first Avenger. While I personally do not like the comic itself, the film is great. I do not think of a single thing bad to say about this film. So hopefully that's good enough for you, comic geek. I guess. But, I still think you are a Nazi. I am not a Nazi! I'm your superhero critic. I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. Nazi! I'm not a Nazi!